Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we've got an interesting but niche project. So this is my Game Boy Macro. Now I made this maybe a couple months ago and I realized, well I left the DS slot available but I can't see the top screen. Luckily, there's a fix for that. Thanks to the DS community, we can swap which screen is displayed or display both using the TV out feature that was discovered by Lost Nintendo History. And with some custom circuit boards, we can install a switch assembly into the empty stylus slot to control the screen swapping. So with that, let's get into it. For this mod, we're going to use a Game Boy Macro, an R4 card, a metal tool to short out the two pins on the back of the DS to flash it, the custom printed circuit boards with a ribbon cable, and a security bit set with a little screwdriver. Now I'm actually going to put a top screen bezel because the lens that I have on it actually cuts off the top and bottom of the full DS screen because it was really meant for Game Boy Advance games. So we're here on my desktop and whenever I'm working on a project I like to make a folder to hold all the files that are involved with it. So that's what we've got here. This is the special version of Flash Me that you are going to need. You need to use this version. You will brick your DS if you do not. I'm going to have a link to the guide where I got this version in the description below. Then we're going to open our R4 and we're just going to drag this, drop it on our R4 and that's it. Now we head over to the DS. To get started, we got to take this battery cover off. Those two gold pads right there next to the screw, right there. Those are the pads we want to short out while we're flashing it. So, take our R4. So we can't see the full menu because the top screen is missing, but if we just scroll down, there's our version of Flash Me. So we need to push XB, XB to continue. Take this, stick it in here. Seems I'm not making good enough contact. Maybe I should just try a different tool. All right, now we can turn off our DS. And it still boots up. So we need to go back to the computer because we need to put another program on here to dump our firmware and then patch it and put it back on. All right, back on our PC. We're gonna go here to the firmware dumper. We want the DS version because we're running this on the R4 and not on a GBA flash cart. Let's run that over here and back to the DS. Here's our DS, BF, dump, and DS. We're gonna run that. Now we won't actually be able to see anything because it's actually all happening on the top screen. But we should wait about 30 seconds. All right, and as long as it dumped, we should have three new files on our SD card once we put it back on our computer. All right, so we've got our BIOS files that we dumped. And we're just gonna make copies of these. It's these two BIOS files and then this one bin file. That's what we want. We're just gonna move it into our project folder. Then we're going to open Lunar IPS, apply IPS patch. Now we need to select the patch file. So this is the patch. And then we need to switch to all files, select the bin file, 
and this is the file that we're going to apply the patch to. The file was successfully patched. Now we can close it out. Now we don't want to throw this firmware onto our DS without testing it because it could crash. So first thing we need to do is rename this. We're just going to rename it to firmware. And then we're going to take these two BIOS and the firmware and move them into our no cache GBA folder. And we're going to open no cache GBA. Now you've got to go to emulation setup and this restart startup entry point. You want to switch that to where it says BIOS. Hit save now. Then open a game. There we go. Boots up to the BIOS. So now we're going to take that, put it back to our DS. And for that, we're also going to need another program. So take these, move them back. We're just going to replace the two. And then I believe we'll make an extra copy of this one. I'm just going to drop it on the desktop for now. And then we'll delete it off here just so we don't get it mixed up. All right. So we're going to move this firmware manager, the Nintendo DS version, drop that onto our R4, and then we're just going to eject it and head back to our DS. Here's our firmware manager. Hmm. Seems like you can't see our firmware. Let's go double check it on the computer. So I figured out my mistake. I actually have to put a folder for firmwares. We're just going to go new folder. Firmwares. We'll try it again. Firmware manager. So we're going to select the firmware.bin press start to flash Got to do the same thing short out our pins there you go done so Fingers crossed, still boots up. Now, now we've got to install the switches. Let's take our flash card out, battery out. Got to remove these two little feet. Now in those two spots, got a Phillips head. We've got another Phillips right here. And then we've got one, two, three, four tri-wing screws. You just want to watch for your shoulders to stay in place. And my volume slider likes to fall out. So just keep an eye on that. So we're going to take the stylus holder out, walk back to our Phillips. So here's our 3D printed switch. Now it might fit right away. You might have to trim a little bit of it. Like my, I might be in the trimming camp.
Now that that's trimmed up, drop that there. We want to use the same gold screws that we're holding down the stylus holder. So now we've got to install our ribbon cable. We are going to have to take this front board out because there's the connector we want to get to. So let's do that. Now, while we've got this out, we're going to want to peel this off. Now we don't want to put this in dirty, so let's get this all nice and clean on the back side at least. We might have to try that a few times, but for now, let's open up this bale. Now, this ribbon cable, we want to put it so that the contacts, right there, those little gold contacts, are facing down, and we want it to be as far to the right of this connector while we're looking at it as we can get. Double check all the way to the side. Lock it down. Okay, let's try lining this back up with our front plate. Let's see if this fits in our opening. little bit of a tight squeeze we've got it in there now I've got all these fingerprints on the back that I got to clean up again and we've got to try to do that without knocking it out Well, that wasn't so bad. All our buttons click. D-pad feels okay. So now, we want to route. We're not going to need this. And we want to make sure we don't accidentally use this screw somewhere it doesn't belong. So we'll put him off to the side. So, this ribbon cable is going to come across our battery. We've got to fold it, give it a little bit of a bend, and then we want to bend right here, kind of lined up because the stylus sits in between these two. Same thing on this side. We want the gold contacts to be facing down at the board.
before we close it up. Let's get our shoulder buttons back in. Helps if I don't put it in the screw hole. Oh. So this ribbon cable is going to be sitting under, but it clicks right here, and that's where our ribbon cable sits. These springs are always fun to get back in. got our shoulders and one more thing don't want to forget about our volume slider so we're gonna pop him in you know with how easy it falls out you'd think it would fall right back in. Let's disconnect this ribbon cable. Just so we don't damage it. I'm trying to get our slider in. We want to make sure our power switch is in the down position so we don't accidentally damage our power switch. And I just heard one of the shoulder springs pop. This is our shortest Phillips. He goes right here in this corner. Make sure, got to click, click, and click, and that thing I said about the power button, well, didn't do it. So here we go again. There you have it. Now, let's talk about what we did. So, we added this switch assembly back here, and we added custom firmware to the DS itself. So now, when I press this button in, it swaps screens. So we're looking at the bottom and the top. Now, the switch also goes out and in. If you pull it out, you change it from the mode it's in. And you can kind of see the bottom screen overlaid. And that's what pushing it in is for. You change the opacity 
and when you're at the max capacity you can click and switch which one is on top the next mode is a picture-in-picture -picture. you can see it down there in the corner kinda of hard to read because it's so small but once again you can swap which one is down there next mode just moves it to the other corner and then the, the base mode is just swapping the whole screen the opacity does not work in this mode but it does work in the picture-in-picture -picture modes and with that we've restored our dual screen functionality to our DS I think this is a great mod to do on a DS that maybe the top screen is cracked or broken in some way uh, a lot of times the hinges on the corners will get weak and they'll get floppy and then they'll break off and then the ribbon cable will tear that's another situation where this would be a great solution if you have some maybe you you're sentimentally attached to your DS and you want to keep using it you can just flash it with some custom firmware and then have a switch assembly put in the back and you can still use your dual screens. Now, this one doesn't have the touch screen in it because I took it out. I don't have a good touch screen to put in it. Um, but you could just as easily trim this faceplate to fit the touch sensor, and then you would also have the touch screen and dual screen support. That would be perfect if you wanted to play games like the Mario Party games or any games that require touch. Probably some rhythm games which are really popular on the DS. But what do you think? Is this worth it, or is this a little too niche? I mean, how much do DS lights even cost anymore? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed today's video, hit that like button. If you didn't like it, hit the dislike. And to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. Anyway, thanks for watching.